In my last video, I talked about how some open source software allow you to modify the program and some don't. Some of my viewers asked me to dive in a little deeper on this topic, so in this video I will be talking about open source licenses, public copyright, copyleft, and other similar ideas. Now, before I dive in, there's a couple of important caveats I need to make. Number one, I am not a lawyer. If you want to use any of these licenses on your own work, please make sure you understand them, and that might mean consulting a lawyer of your own. Number two, this is probably not a terribly important topic unless you plan to become an independent creator of some kind. So this is very similar to my tour video. If you end up more confused at the end than you were before, just forget it. It's not essential to having good privacy and security. Finally, number three, there are literally dozens, maybe even hundreds of open source licenses. There's no way I can cover them all. Actually, let's start there. So what is an open source license? It's basically like a copyright, but it's less restrictive. For example, the Electronic Frontier Foundation writes a lot of blog posts, and some people may want to share those blog posts in other formats, like newspapers, for example. So the EFF states on their website that you're actually allowed to share any of their articles without asking as long as you give credit. This saves everyone a lot of time going through the proper channels of emailing them and asking them, and it helps EFF because they get to spread their word and they still get credit for the work. So why would someone choose to use an open source license over a traditional copyright. Well, needless to say, this varies from person to person. I think that the general idea behind it comes from the ethical ramifications. For example, I firmly believe that the world is a better place when information is shared freely. So my website is an open source license, Creative Commons. You are allowed to share it. This allows people to put the word out there, like EFF, but I still also get the benefit of the visibility from getting attributed. Cory Doctorow is a really well-known science fiction author, and he he releases all of his work under the Creative Commons license that allows free sharing and fan fiction as long as people don't profit off of it. People can share the books as much as they want, they don't get in trouble for pirating, he still gets the credit, and they're not taking any money from him. Another really famous example is Nine Inch Nails, who released his Ghost album under a Creative Commons license so that people could remix it without getting a copyright ding. In all of these cases, I think it really comes down to enriching the community. You're trying to help the community and you're trying to give people the content with without restricting them and allowing them to explore and share and build off of that. I believe it was Stephen Hawking who said that anything he had accomplished, he had done because he had built off the shoulders of giants. Why are there different kinds of licenses? For the same reason that there are different kinds of products and solutions. They are all catering to different problems and trying to solve different things. Some of them focus specifically on software. Some of them protect creative works like music or books. Some of them are more restrictive. Some of them are less restrictive. For example, with the Creative Commons, some of them allow you to do anything you want with it as long as you give credit. Some of them say you can only do things that are non-commercial. Some of them say that you can't modify it, or if you do modify it, you have to use the exact same license that allows other people to modify your modification. That's why there's different kinds, because there's different permissions. So how does this relate to you, the viewer, if you are not a programmer or anything technical like that? In the last video, I mentioned that some open source licenses you can can make adjustments and some you can't. Generally speaking, these are what's known as FOSS and FLOSS. FOSS is free open source software and FLOSS is free Libra open source software. Both of these are monetarily free. You don't pay any money for them. The Libra in FLOSS is kind of a slang that basically means you have more freedom. So how does this affect you if you're a viewer and you're not a programmer? If you're not a programmer, you can't fork this stuff, right? You don't know how to. If you are a programmer, then this is a pretty important topic and you should educate yourself on it. If you're not a programmer, there's still a couple reasons you may care. First off, there's ethical reasons. As I mentioned, I believe the world is a better place when information is freely available and people can share and improve upon those ideas. Some people feel so strongly about this that this is a factor in the things that they choose to use. When you're trying to decide what program to use, if this is a really important thing to you, you may want to support a program that shares your values. The other reason that probably does apply to some of my non-technical viewers is creativity. Again, there are multiple licenses for multiple things. There's writing, there's books, there's music, there's works of art, there's all kinds of things. Videos like these. These are Creative Commons videos. The one you're watching right now is under an open source license. So if you create anything of any kind, whether it's short stories or pictures or drawings, 
drawings or anything, you may still be interested in getting to know some of your options out there on open source licenses and seeing if those are things that you want to support. Like I said, there are those out there that still allow people to share your work, but not make money off of it. That could be really cool if you're a photographer. People can share your work freely and they won't get in trouble, but you're still the only one that can profit. There's tons of options out there. And again, there's no way I could possibly go through all of them. That would be a crazy long video. If you want to learn more about this, I started on Wikipedia. Of course, there's plenty of other websites out there. There's also some work from the Free Software Foundation that has some pretty good information about this. Whatever the case, if this is something that interests you, I encourage you to go out and do your research. And again, if I have just left you more confused, then I apologize and just forget the whole thing. I hope this has been helpful and thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video.